Hi, Martin here. Today I want to show you how to change out your timing chain set in your 4.7 and 3.7 Dodge Jeep Chrysler and Mitsubishi engines. I'm going to be doing a complete set. This is the chains, gears, guides, tensioners, the whole nine yards. I got one from Chloe's and you know, very good quality company, been around for nearly a hundred years. You're going to get a good timing chain set from them. Do not buy one of those Chinese knockoff ones for a hundred and some dollars or, or where you're getting a, an oil pump, water pump, all the gaskets and timing chain set for like hundred and twenty dollars. Come on, that's junk. Go with something that's you know, people that have been around for a long time making a quality product, all right? Now, um, I was doing a cam change out on this. I'm installing the 08 camshafts in my earlier 4.7 liter. This is an 04. And I got to thinking, well, if I'm going that far, why not go ahead and do the timing chain set too? Because I want the utmost performance. I want to install all this stuff and then have timing chain issues. Now the neat part is I got to tear this thing apart and I am so glad that I decided to do this because I'm going to show you why. Okay right here look at that. You can see that right there. This is your main guide tensioner for the primary chain. It is totally snapped in two with this part of it is totally gone. And then there's also two springs that go behind here. And then also, there's a guide that sits right there on that piece of metal. If you look closely, you can actually see grooves run into that, have ground themselves into that. And that's from this chain rubbing up against that the whole time. I didn't even know this was a problem. I mean, I didn't even realize it. So I'm, I'm glad I'm taking it apart and putting a new chain set in. Now what I suspect happened, this cylinder head on the right side had been replaced before I bought this vehicle, you know, from the previous owner. I would imagine the mechanic that did this work probably broke that guide on the primary chain and didn't say nothing. Left the springs out, I'm hoping, and just let it go that, that way. Now, it may have broke afterwards, and I'll find it in the bottom of this oil pan one of these days with those springs sitting down there. And if they're not there, then I know whoever put this back together definitely broke it while they're putting it back together and left those pieces out. So we'll see, because uh, oil pan gasket Windy tray combo will be coming up next. Now, with the valve covers removed and the timing cover removed, and if you need to know how to do that, I will put a couple links up here and also links down here below in the description of videos I've done in the past that will help you get that cover off and those valve covers off. Now, the one thing you want to do is we've got to bring the engine to top dead center. And that is where this keyway, right here, this key, is at 10 o'clock. Now if the harmonic balancer and the cover is still on, now what you're looking for is this notch right here on the harmonic balancer, and then this little triangle of shape that's pointing at that notch. And you got, you see right up here, you got TDC, that's top dead center. You want to rotate your engine to that, and have your cam gears where you can see this R and L and the V8 pointing upward, the V8 being on top from both gears. And that, what that is doing is bringing this uh, number one cylinder into the exhaust stroke. Because what this is, it, it's considered an interference engine, which means that valves can hit the pistons if the timing is incorrect. So, by bringing the number one cylinder up to top dead center, 
and the two cam gears where the V8's facing upward, none of that can happen. All right, I'm gonna start by removing the cam bolts. Now, I made a special tool for this. They do sell one, but it only works on one side. When I got here, it works on both sides. This is how it would work if this bolt was actually tight. Now, I already gotten this loose, see? When you hold, hold the cam from moving with this tool right here, and then you can break loose the bolt. These are set at 90 foot-pounds, so they are rather tight. Once you get that bolt broke loose, it'll come right off with your fingers. Okay. You also need to remove this plug right here to gain access to the bolt that's holding the top tensioner in. All right, now using a T40 Torx to remove this upper bolt here on your guide tensioner and the lower one over here. When replacing this bolt, torque it to a maximum of 13 foot pounds and place blue Loctite on the threads. This particular bolt can be over torqued and stripped out rather easily, so be very careful. Also, retorque this one to 13 foot pounds with blue Loctite. I almost forgot the idler bolt right here. I had this one broke loose earlier. 13 millimeter. All right. Now the way I removed this piece here, normally you wouldn't do that the way I did it, but I am replacing this because it is broke. I didn't even try putting what they call a grenade pin or a release pin. Now, this one here, this piece here, that's basically what was broke off of this. This actually coming, this piece right here, coming from this HO motor I got sitting right here. Now, I try to do the correct way by clamping this down with a pair of vice grips or channel locks and have a grenade pin or release pin ready. And by squeezing the chain right here and the guide until the holes line up right there okay you put the pin in here and then you're able to remove the timing chain set and leaving this in place now I tried that on this mo well on the HO and for me the holes wouldn't line up and I ended up breaking this piece good luck to you 
hopefully you got this piece already ordered you know you're starting out with a whole kit maybe before you actually even do one of these timing chains and you're not intending on replacing this part see what your availability is on getting one as soon as you can especially if you got to have the vehicle run let's say Monday morning to go to work right okay starting with this idler gear here we're gonna start with the most rearward gear or sprocket now grabbing one of the longer chains we got two of the links here that are of darker color those we're going to put back here on the rear sprocket and that so you can see both teeth both links in the window right there Then what we want to do is take like a zip ties or rubber bands work well too. And zip tie that at around 10 o'clock. Noting that this is the top of your gear right here with that indicator right there. Now take your other chain, the longer one, and with the two chain links right there that are of darker color, and you're going to place them in this window right here. I call it a window. It's a slot in the, in the gear. And then using a zip tie, secure the chain. And that's at approximately 2 o'clock, just like that. Now taking your primary chain, and with the two darkened chain links right there, put them on in between the mark on the main sprocket. Now the uh, main gear they give you here for the crank gear has a mark on either side. You can use either side toward the front. Just like that. And if you like, you can run a zip tie right through here as well. This kind of isn't necessary though. I mean, this you can clearly see if it's on or not. not. All right, and there we are. We're ready to reinstall that. And after you get those snugged up, torque those to 21 foot-pounds. All right, next we're going to install the right hand side. This would be the lower tensioner guide. And, you know, when you reinstall this bolt, Chrysler recommends you put a little blue Loctite on it. And this is the other one you torque to 13 foot-pounds. And again, you torque these two bolts to 21 foot-pounds. Okay, now before I reinstall this, I went ahead and just put a light coat of engine oil over the chain and on the gears. Now you could do the same thing on the idler gear shaft. I got some uh, assembly lube here. I'm going to apply a little bit of that in here just to make things go a little smoother.
once you get the chain set started I like laying the chains the secondary ones on top of the sprockets and that way now you can be able to slide the whole chain set back as one you have to do both the bottom and the top gear at the same time and once you get it fully seated back just like that now I'm able to reach in and grab the chain and pull it up and just place it on the camshaft itself to hold it in place this is much easier if you do not put the upper guide or guide tensioner in until afterwards all right now that we got the chains pulled up to each camshaft we can go ahead and install the upper guide and guide tensioner and then with this bolt here remember to apply some blue loctite to it the bolt I'm installing right there the one that is a Torx T40 torque that to 13 foot-pounds with the blue loctite Once you get these two bolts installed for this upper guide tensioner, torque that to 21 foot-pounds. All right, now with all four guides installed, we're ready to reinstall the gears on the cams. As I actually ordered the later model 4.7 timing chain, even though this is the early one, what I want to do is show you the difference between the two. All right, this one here I got is a factory Mopar one. As you can see, it is clearly marked right there as it should be. Now, this one being for my vehicle, and if I line up both that slot and the slot here, you can see that the target wheels, the slots are in different locations. And that's because of the tone ring on the crankshaft. Uh, the earlier ones have 16 teeth, the later ones have 32. Now if you're wondering, well, what do I have, earlier or late? The easiest thing to do is look at your ECM. Does it have three plugs or four plugs on it? The early ones being having, has three and the later models have four. And you definitely want to make sure you're ordering the correct one because if you put the wrong one in, it is not going to run probably at all you're gonna write engine codes and you probably could actually even do some damage to your engine so make sure you get the correct target wheel and I also got a Mopar original as you can see it's clearly marked right there I found them on eBay and actually I found a you know real good deal on them and they are Mopar originals all right near ECM on my vehicle it's located on the right side and by the firewall right here and as you can see there's three locations to plug into so that makes it the early model the G J Tech the later model being the NGC okay we're gonna line up the mark right here with our darkened chain link right there Okay, I'm going to unfasten the tie wrap I got in here. Now you're going to need to rotate the camshaft. This is my most unfavorite part of it because I hate putting anything like this 
on that camshaft. And that's why I got that rag in there. I don't like putting marks on it. There it is. Right there. Go ahead and reinstall the bolt. You don't need to tighten it right now. See, put marks in it. I hate that. and reinstall the cam bolt. Definitely make sure that dowel is, you see where it's only about a sixteenth of an inch from being flush. You want to make sure that is absolutely all the way on there. Alright, now we're ready to install these hydraulic tensioners. Now, the one on the left, just be careful, this little plate can't come off. So, I'm putting that on. And, these are your grenade pins, or a release pin. Uh, leave those in there until after installation, and we'll pull all three of them at once. And, I'm going to show you a trick on how to collapse these, should you accidentally pull the pin, or maybe you're reusing yours. Okay, about these hydraulic tensioners. Now this is uh, the used one out of this vehicle. And I got a pin in here right now. Now, when you pull this out used, it's gonna look like that. That pops right up. And let's say you did this to your brand new one or you're gonna reuse your old ones. You didn't get the kit with the hydraulic tensioners in it. Well, you got to get this compressed again. Well, right here, you can see this hole over here on the side. There. Get a, like a pick like this or a small blade screwdriver like that one. What you're going to do is get right in here and there's a small part you're going to pull off to one side and that's going to release this part right here so you're able to push this down and then when you let off here it'll hold this plunger down now these on the used ones if they got oil and stuff in them they can be quite difficult all right you pull this little piece over this allows see how that pin just dropped right there there and now you take the pin there shove that in there and there we go we got it and now this is ready for install
and before I forget, we gotta get this bolt in there. Put a film of oil back here. Now this is the only bolt that gets torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Once you get that bolt torqued, check for end play. You want to have just like that. Now before we pull these pins, we'll check the timing marks one last time. See we got it right there. We are straight up and down here. Come over here. Again, timing mark on the gear with the link on the chain. We're looking good there. And there as well. Now if you look through this window right here, now if you look through that window right there, you can see the two darkened links there and this one's hard to see if you look right back in there you can see the upper tooth all right at this point we're ready to pull the grenade pins okay with the tiny chain set completely installed ready to put the cover back on I'm using a Felpro gasket kit right here. This comes complete with a new gasket, a water pump, and your crankshaft seal. I'm not gonna change out my crankshaft seal or the water pump. The crankshaft one I did just recently when I installed a new uh, ATI super damper. All right. And then we need to also install the two plugs on the cylinder head. For the plug right here, I apply some thread sealant. Short 90 foot pounds. All right, now all that's left is go ahead and get the cover on, all the accessories, valve covers, and hook everything back up and we'll fire this up. <laughs> yeah! Well, there you have it. You know, I was actually dreading the whole thing, having to put the timing chain set in. But actually, that wasn't that bad, and I'd be more than happy to do it again. Well, not really that happy. But uh, it all went real well, and the reason I was so excited when that thing started up, I had, this thing has been down for two and a half weeks, putting the 08 camshafts in, and solid lifters, and adjusting those, and then I decided to do the timing chain set. So, I was real happy to see it run again. And man, does it run great with these 08 cams. Woo! Love it. Now, I want to thank you all for watching. And 
I'll put uh, links down below in the description for all the parts that I used and tools. I'd appreciate uh, the thumbs up. And if you never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and the little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications of any new up videos that I upload as I do. All right, thanks again for watching.